I want to start with a picture. It shows me on the right side and Lauren on the left side, back in Croatia on holiday. This picture can show you two things. First, if one arm is broken, the other one is quickly broken too. <laughs> Second, that's where two friendships started. This picture can show you, however, that with that friendship came an incubator, a drive to rethink the status quo, to think about society, about mobility, and finally to come to an idea to build a solar car. And at first, it was just an idea, going bigger in our heads, and partly to escape school, to be honest. Uh, for example, we called the suppliers in the brakes and um, wanted to sound like a real company, and um, so we did not have to call them in the evening. And by then, it went so far, we even thought about quitting. Sane people made us dismiss the idea, and I think that's why we call them parents. So, after two weeks, after our graduation, we started up in the same sane people's garage, and this is actually the first picture ever taken on the project. And we were so arcane and mysterious about the project, we didn't even tell them what we actually started in their garage. They had no idea. And to be honest, we had no idea how to build a solar car. Nothing. The internet was our biggest resource, and YouTube, our greatest teacher. We learned how to weld, how to solder, how to build a whole electric circuit for the vehicle. And it was a great time. It was actually a dream coming true for us. Until we found out we hit a certain boundary we couldn't cross. It was the limit of our pocket money. So, we founded another company called Coconuts and Smoothies. <laughs> on the weekends, we sold smoothies, providing us the money to work on the car the rest of the week. And things went quite well. We even moved to a bigger place outside of town and had much more advanced tools and people coming in and sharing with us the knowledge. But because it was so far out of town, we didn't want to waste time on commuting. So we even installed a bedroom there. But talking about precious time, that's also where one of our biggest mistakes came into place. And that's because at that time, range anxiety and battery capacity at electric vehicles was still a big thing. And even for us, um, I must say. So we came up with an idea we thought was pretty smart. At that time, um, we developed a range extender. That's an onboard generator that burns fossil fuels to recharge the batteries. And it was highly efficient. And we thought, well, that was a good concept, only to find out in the end that not the range is a problem, but to keep burning fossil fuels. So by then, we had a huge time problem. We were way behind our timetable, and we knew that, so we went all in. We lived there through a whole summer, day and night, only with the vision to stop the burning of fossil fuels. And then we had it, our own solar car. You see, this car recharges its battery during standing time. 96% of the time, a car is standing on the street doing nothing. This car is recharging the battery to provide you free of charge electric range of up to 30 kilometers a day. So, we had our car, everything's good. And while we had that knowledge of building a car, we absolutely had no idea how to bring it to the streets. So, we, to show you, we didn't even have a name for that car. We worked three years on a car which we didn't have a name for. So uh, one day, Lauren passed by his way on our local Munich Haras, and he walked by every day, but on one day, he noticed a small graffiti, almost too small to be visible, cyan. And that's when you knew we had to found a company. So back then, Navina came into place. Navina was Lauren's roommate at the time. And 
she showed us a totally new thing we never saw before. It was called design. <laughs> Suddenly, we had a brand, we had a name, we had a logo, we had, we had everything. We collected all the money we had, skipped all these business plan competitions, and went straight to the notary, without even knowing what we really signed there. So, by then, as with these smoothies, you could say, we had another boundary. We knew we couldn't do this alone. So, from the beginning, we thought about crowdfunding. And now, it was just about the right time. Our team grew bigger, and we just launched a crowdfunding campaign. And to be honest, we didn't even know until day one if people would actually be interested. Until the first day of that campaign, we didn't know if anybody would ever click on it. Fortunately, things went viral. Our video got millions of views, and people all over the world came to us and were excited about the ideas, and newspapers reported on us, and television. And we saw that actually the people wanted to see, finally, the sign on the street. So, by now, as of today, we still rely on the crowd and private investors. As our vision grew much larger, because by 2017, we want to produce three prototypes to offer test drives, because with these test drives, we will go into a pre-sale. So, raising crowdfunding to a whole new level and keeping our independence. Together, we can really show that we can make a difference. We can show the industry that things finally have to change. But here comes a question. What does it take to build a solar car? So little. Because you actually don't feel the power of how much you can change until you actually do it. What does it take to stick to a vision? A true and honest friendship. Thank you very much.